Yo, what up? This is the Big Face Trucker. Haven't seen y'all in a while. Been out here working. Psych! Be relaxing, y'all. I, I, I really don't work that hard. I'm the guy that actually... Now, I sit at home, and I bid super high on loads. So I, I've been averaging over $4 a, $4 a mile. And uh, last month, I did, <laughs> I think I did six loads last month, six loads. Versus the month before, I did like maybe 16, not 16, maybe I must have did about 11 loads in the month before that, and uh, I made more money. So, it's been working out, bidding high on these convoy loads. JB Hunt loads, XBO loads. Um, remember my broker that I have, broker friend? I really don't do too many of his loads. He will call me, and if he's in a bind, he gives me the whole load. I mean, I did a load for 150 miles for $1,000 because he needed, he needed to get the load off. And I felt, I didn't really feel that bad about doing it for $1,000 because if you, trust me, I think there's still more money on the table. Especially when it comes to like engine parts. They, they need that stuff. So, I'm out here now picking up a load right now. And I'm down here in Atlanta picking up the load going over, up to lug off. Lug off South Carolina. And, uh, caught this load for $900. Um, I would like to say this load is like 200 miles. I don't know. It's going my way, it's going to the house and all that. So I figured I gotta drop it in the morning. And I'll probably do it uh, one of those splits one more time. And uh, South Carolina. And uh, shoot. I'm putting the address in as we speak. Hold on for a minute. 166. And uh, let's see, corporate. There it is. I didn't really bid that high on this load. I should have went. Should have went a thousand. The guy would have paid a thousand. Yeah, from Atlanta to Lug Off is two hundred and forty-seven miles. 47 miles going my direction to my house. Uh, I'm 47 miles from my house. So 200 miles. And the reason why I get the $4 or more is because I'm coming back empty. I'm not going to sit out there unless I see a load that I can pick up right away. I'm not going to sit out there for another load. I'm just going to come back and keep, keep it moving. Uh, but uh, a lot of things is going on, isn't it? Uh, the main thing is election that's going on. And it's, 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 this, is, this is right now, this is where the fuckery is going to start. You know what I'm saying? All these places that went down and 
things things start breaking down and all that other stuff. So now it's, it's going to be people counting and doing their little scam thing and whatever. So you can expect some things because it's kind of like seems like <clears throat> seems like um, uh, Trump is in the same situation as uh, Hillary. I, I'm not having been following it since today, so you know it's been on all night. People is wake, hoping, waking up to uh, see who's president. If we're going to go another four years with this guy, I just say hunker down. We don't know what Biden's going to do. He says what he's going to do. Still hunker down. Four years. These four years with Trump was hell. I wouldn't say hell, because put it this way. Presidents, I guess they, they, they do affect the trucking. And when I got in this business, this is when it was affected by politics. Um, my auto repair business went through all years. I didn't even pay presidents any mind. I mean, all the other presidents, they never really um, made me money or affected my money until I got into trucking. So everything worked out. I thought I wasn't going to make it. When the pandemic hit, I thought I wasn't going to make it. Now, of course, anybody can make it if you get out there and run, but you'll never go home under the cheap loads. I really thought insurance was going to knock me out the box because OIDA went up to $2,000 a month. And I got rid of them. Well, I could kiss my ass. Um, it's just, I don't, I don't really know what to say. You know what I'm saying? It, it, I figured, you know, hey, maybe Biden needs to give it a shot and see what he could do about this um, pandemic. They say if they shut it down, if he shuts this down, I think we might could play catch up with freight because the freight is here. Play catch up and put stuff back on the shelves. Uh, for the people that get shut down and lose or not, well, go out of business, lose their jobs, they, bet they need to be starting to set up a cushion. Um, prepare for it. Uh, also at the si same time, it's going to be funds that's going to be given out. Just like another PPP going to come out. Another EIDL, EIDL is going to come out. Uh, even if you got the first one, you can get the second one. So, if it pans out that way. So, Trump kind of used his, his little strategy and said, hey, I'm not giving out no more money until I'm president, if I'm president again. If he is, if he's not going to be president again, we're going to catch some hell for the few months that he's going to be there until removed. Um, I doubt it it's going to touch the freight. I really think this freight is going to rock for a while. But you will see the signs because I'm looking on low board. Ain't no way in hell. Atlanta had 1,600. And the 50 mile radius from my house had 1,600 loads going out. And when it when it hit, when that, when the brokers dropped down to a dollar and all that other stuff, when it hit, there was like 100, you know, 100, 200 at the most, not even loads a day I would see. 
and then you have to get on there and beg to live. <laughs> I'm just glad that I knocked out my biggest headache, which is knocked out the truck. Trail is not a problem. I'm still doing auto repair at the house. You know, for some of the some some customers, I'm not putting it out there as a marketing. I'm just doing it, let people know my people that I know that pay and don't have a problem. And that's been working out, you know, so. But uh, other than that, you know, I've been thinking about putting, you know, trying to do this uh, signing drivers on. And, and the more I, I just, I can't see myself signing a driver on and the driver gets on and he messes my, my, my authority up. You know, I just can't put it in my head. And you guys that's doing that, hats off to you. You know, I think that comes with a with variation. Uh, I guess it's a strict thing that when you hire a driver, what to look for. And then you know, it comes with more more money. But all I think all money is not good money. You know, it's all, I guess it's all in the plan of what I want to do with trucking and how long I want to be in it and where I'm going to go on my next venture, you know. Uh, I think I want to use trucking as just a side piece, go out, pay the insurance and just have it anytime I need to go out and make a couple of thousand dollars, just go out. Get into something else, you know, uh, something easier, something smart, less headache, make your life much easier. That's how I'm looking at doing things. Dispatch. This call is from the department. Oh, boy. If you get any calls from, uh, I blocked the number. If you get any calls from that social security stuff, just block them. Don't fall for the scam. Social security don't never call you. But yeah, um, just, um, uh, just thinking, you know, I see, I see James Best has moved up and, and my hat's off to him. And everything, he, he's definitely uh, on the path. I guess the same path that Jeffrey like. You know, uh, Jeffrey like gives me good information. You know, go to his channel, subscribe, subscribe to it. Big Rig Network, uh, yeah, Big Rig Radio Network. Uh, get good information over there as far as doing trucking. He's really advanced to more where you have your truck and trailer. And you're looking for your next step. Some videos come out with, he comes out with some educational for all truckers. You know, and James Best comes out with his, uh, with his, um, with his brokerage. And I think, I think that's really wonderful. Uh, I really, hats off to him because he really toned it down. Toned it down and being like, more like a boss you know also catch catch Snorlord um, he's got some good information over there very smart guy right there as far as trucking I follow those guys you know because I don't have time for the bullshit that's out there with them other channels or whatever I really don't watch them no more I, I really don't watch them no more you know I watch a couple of lady truckers for entertainment um, and what they're going out there for, you know, they could eliminate a lot of their headaches. I mean, when, when I was out there, it was like, oh man, I want to do flatbed. Oh, I want to do refill. Oh, I want to do this, that, and that. But really, if you really think about it, how long is your body going to be able to do that? The touch freight and all that other stuff. 
If you do it the smart way, you wouldn't have to go through that error or putting your body through the stress. You're in trucking to make money, right? So you want to find the smartest ways to make money. And drive-in is a real smart way. No touch. Walk inside. Documents, paper, that's it. Send it off and that's it. Drive to the location, drop it off. I think that's really the easiest thing. Because I started out with Maverick doing flatbed. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm on top of this thing. And a wind could blow me off balance or anything. Or just jumping down from the product to the trailer, from the trailer to the ground, wear and tear on your knees, getting out there in, in below zero weather, going places that you don't really want to go to. Nah, didn't want to do that. And, and Rifa, you're sitting there, you're aggravated by the time that you're sitting there and until you get adjusted to it. You know, uh, it's going a short distance. You make a lot of money. But the time and everything, I think everything just balanced out the same to me. A few dollars more or whatever, you know. But other than that, nah. Container, I'm not going to do container. Forget about going to some stinking ports. Uh, not going to do that. Grab a container. It's got bad tires. Low, you know, this the, the trail is not yours. So now, you know, you're picking up some other body shit, you know? So now, nah. So I think the, the best thing is to go out, get your own truck and trailer, find you somebody to lease on, or either um, go for your authority and be done with it. Because eventually, after you finish leasing, that's the next move, you know? I don't hear too much about some of these drivers out here that I used to watch a long time ago. I didn't pass them. You know, they they have no more information for me because I didn't pass where they was going or where they at right now. So, it's to the point, you know, you get to that point, like, hey, you got your authority, what you gonna do? Once you start signing on, people, it's just... That's that's it, you know? And then you could take that to another direction as far as branching out to government stuff and carrying government stuff or whatever, you know? A lot of directions you can go with trucking, you know? Uh, it all depends if you want that headache. And that's what I'm thinking this. Do I really want that headache? Do I really want... Do you know? Do I really want another driver out there running and he ain't taking care of his truck or he's speeding, he's skipping way stations and and he getting drunk or he got he got marijuana in the system and he ain't saying that you know get in an accident and and you know cussing out the customers and you know you got your load boards calling you up talking you know hey your driver's cussing out the shippers and stuff like that hey you know what i'm saying will it go that way i don't know but i have to say the people that i am watching it's not going through that problem so i have to really find out what are they doing how are they doing it so i don't go through it what is the key things to watch or look for you know and it really you can figure that out by just analyzing yourself and just looking at yourself and say, look, I want a person just like me. And you got to figure out, you got to go into their mind, their driver's mind. And you got to figure out how they really think. You got to look at their truck and see how their truck is set up. Do they keep a clean inside truck? You know, is, do, do, you know, is everything set up where it's not a di distraction in here? You know, most guys go down the highway. I see them, they got their GPS in the middle of their dashboard, which is, you know, you get a DOT and a DOT comes and says, look, six inches up, six, six, six inches down. That's where you could put it. You can't put it in the direction of where your eyesight is. That's why they snap on like little pebble marks in your windshield. But I got these guys going, I'm seeing these guys going down. They got the GPS in front of the steering wheel. They can't see over the nose. 
or they got a long nose, or they got a short nose, they, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you got to really look at stuff like that. And if you try to correct them, they might have that attitude like, I ain't doing what you tell me. I'm, get out of my truck. This is, I'm running my truck. You know? But they're not realizing your numbers is on the side of their truck. You know? So, what do you do? You get rid of them. You know? And then it becomes a headache. And then you just be like, you know what? Hell with this. I'll just do what I'm doing. You know, the money's good when you got five trucks out there and they are working. You know, they out there running, making their pay and everything. I got to figure out all the other stuff, the office work. I'm not a good office dude. You know, I'm not a good office dude. I'm going to tell you that right now. But as I go along, I'm getting better and better at it. Uh, a lot of stuff that I'm doing now didn't think I was capable of doing it, but I'm doing it. I'm learning it, you know. So I guess the next step would teach me some things that, you know, it's, it's not really that difficult. It's just a learning process going into a field that you just don't know until you get there and you figure it out, you know. Hats off, I just found out to that... Uh, there's a young man that I know from the family. His name is Jonathan. And uh, he's been driving longer than me, you know. And uh, I'm hoping that he will bite on knowing that we're in the position that I am in right now where he can actually come on with me and actually be probably my right-hand man. He's a family member, right? So... He probably could be my right hand man and, and uh maybe you need to look into probably getting him a truck or he says he's got a truck, so but he's with a family member, an in law. So I don't know how that goes. Do I go over there and pull him? Say, Hey, come on, man, make this money. Let's make more money over here. Make your life much easier. Or do I just let him make that dis well, he's gonna make that decision or whatever. If I do, step in. But I'm kind of leery of stepping in, you know. I'm like, I'm really comfortable where I'm at right now. Uh, I, you know, I'm comfortable where I'm at. Shoot, I spend four days at home and I'm good. Like I said, I'll do six loads and I high bid and I catch these starving ass brokers and that they need a load moved and they, you know, it's not far and they gonna pay high money and I'm good. I remember, I, you know, 20 grand was what I had to make I had to make 20 grand every month when I had this night of finance uh, payment on me and now that dropped down some guys say oh why you stop running like that well I put my grind in for five years I missed out on a lot of things I went through a lot of stuff stuff that I should have been there and I wasn't there so now it's not. I'm not going to put myself in that situation. You could do it. More power to you. You know what I'm saying? My object is to get out the truck and have the trucking business running. Yes. But other than that, other same call. I don't know why they keep calling. But uh, the number's blocked, but my phone won't block it. It's crazy. But, yeah, you know, and it's just a lot of decisions. Well, it's not a lot. It's just a, it's two decisions that I have to make. And I figure I got until the new year. I'll be glad when all this voting shit get out the way, texting my phone, sending garbage in my mail. All that stuff. I'd be glad when all that's out the way and we could get back back to uh, at least some kind of normal normalness. But from this whole voting thing, I see a lot of things is happening. And from militias, gun sales, uh, just the racist 
that's out there acting up in stores. Some ain't minding their business, creating problems out there. You know, uh, people are worried about some kind of uh, uh, um, civil war or something like that, black against white and stuff like that. And I'm going to tell you, you know, wow, they're about to load me. I'm going to tell you, if you don't know, uh, there's been forming a lot of black militias being formed, if you don't know, a lot. And they are contacting me, you know, and some are talking, they just want to protect their own. Some are talking the crazy shit. And I'm like, the crazy shit is like just putting my family at risk. You know, and it, this is both sides. Both sides is talking the crazy shit, just going out just because this one guy won't get out of office or this guy is about to run another four years. I, you know, I, I really don't partake in that bullshit, you know what I'm saying, but it, I got to protect my family, we all got to protect our family, that's that's basically it, we all got to protect my family, I am protecting my family by teaching my family everything that I know about guns, and I am, and I am taking some tactical courses now, so I'm getting in shape and all that, which is a good thing, you know, but it's just good to know. Years and years ago, I was in self-defense. I don't need no more self-defense shit. I just got to get in shape. <laughs> hand to hand and all that other shit. I know all that shit. I, I pretty well can maintain myself. But it's, it's, it's scary out here because I go into some spots. And I can see that some of these shippers... Don't like a black person. And I know it's vice versa too. You know, but what do we do about this racism? I have a clue, man. Will it fade away? I think it's going to fade away. Uh, it will fade away as long as the elders keep teaching their kids racism. It's going to be here. But if the elders start waking up to the reality about just being a human being, we all got the same blood, we just got different skin color, and we all just want to make a living and live comfortable, eat good food, drink cold beer, taste some of the best liquors, you know what I'm saying? Sip on some moonshine, you know what I mean? The good things of life. You know, but I really, I really, you know, this is really scary because when I went to go get ammo, all right, this class, this class wants me to have 300 rounds and like two, 300 rounds is like 150 rounds for the pistol and 300 rounds for the AR and that you know they give a discount at the in this club gun club and they practice right by my house they hear them every day uh, they even got night night shit night shit and stuff like that I, I, I had to build an AR and I never did that before but I got the scope and the rails and all that other stuff it was pretty interesting you know what I'm saying the thing looks like a little a little M16 or something like that, you know? But, uh, I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm dying to go out and, and run 300 rounds through it. Uh, but uh, what I don't want is, I did my training in Georgia, and when 
Fort Benning, Georgia. And when nighttime comes in and I'm in the woods, you know, you, you start thinking about that shit. But uh, that's another shit. That's another story. But other than that, start thinking about stuff. It ain't no joke being shot at. And I'm talking about being shot at on the street. Scary. I just hope everything just is a big blow up of talk. The gun world... I want my guns, so I don't want nobody taking my guns, and that's why I'm going to grab them. I don't know how they're going to talk about they going to take them back or whatever, but that's going to be a standoff with a lot of people. Um, this vaccine that's coming out, a lot of people is going to be talking about they're going to force you to take the, take the shot. A lot of people don't want to take the shot. You know, and, and, and what if it comes to the point where they force you to take the shot? They come to your house and they give you the shot to monitor you. What are you doing? You know, that, that that's crazy. And, and that's all being nosy. You want to know what people are doing. You want to know what group is doing something. You know, it's just... It's just it's a new change, yo. New change is coming. A new change. And I don't really want to bore y'all on this, but I figure I'm in the truck. I ain't did a video in a while. I figured y'all want to see my ugly face, you know. Bow. I still got the gray hair. The beard is growing. I'm trying to play Santa Claus for the uh, Christmas days. But I'm really thinking about cutting it off. I just let it grow. I'm not even edging it up or not. I'm just going to let it grow. Uh, I've been doing runs up into New York. I go up to New York for 33, 30, 33 to 36, Long Island. I come back with 25. That's how I did my, my loads. Two loads a week. And, you know, I'm making five grand. And it's just like, hey, piece of cake and I'm home, you know. That's where trucking is going to take you. If you if you do the right thing and if you're on your grind, get a, get that truck payment out the way, get that trailer payment out the way, get whatever you gotta get paid. Start freeing up your money. Stop putting yourself in debt. Don't take out no loans if you're making the money. Don't take out no loans. The money that you make in trucking, put that to the side. You need some repair work done. You got a maintenance account or you go out there and do a load and make the money. Let trucking make the load, the money to pay for the maintenance. It already did. But if you put your mindset out and say, once I put this money up, I'm not touching it. As long as the truck is running right and everything, I'm going to go out here and make the money and get the truck fixed or keep it right maintenance wise and everything. And you do it like that. It's all kind of ways you can think about it, you know. But uh, it's something out here. It's something. For all the people that died with coronavirus, COVID-19, and the people that haven't been touched or haven't known nobody that died from it, And you don't have no feeling behind that. I give two shits about taxes. You make the money, you pay the taxes. You find a sweet spot, you pay the taxes every year. That's plain said. They go up, they go down. We cannot beat the tax game. It's what it is, what it is. But when lives is at fault, you got to really start thinking about it. Hey, you know, 
you worried about your taxes, but you ain't worried about the deaths. But if the deaths start touching your family, all right, then you'll forget about that tax shit. Real shit. You'll forget about it. As long as you keep you in, out of harm's way and, and your family's doing right, you ain't going to think about the death stuff. I have plenty of people that passed behind COVID. I got a niece that works up in New York where she didn't put bodies, double bag bodies, in refrigerated trucks. They no longer needed her on the floor. They had nurses putting the bodies in the bags, putting it in refrigerated trucks and stacking it. In New York. All right. Georgia. I got so many friends lost their grandmothers, lost their mothers, lost their aunts, lost their sisters, lost their brothers. I know children that lost their fathers. People that's close. So when you, with this COVID, this pandemic, the president, they said he had a warning. He bypassed, he downplayed it, blah, blah, blah. He goes out and get, says he got it. Three days later, he don't have it. That's a slap in the face to the Americans that lost people. Slap in the face. And we all tired of the lies. Come on now. Let's be real. Let's re be real on this shit. Let's be real. We know the lies. This is a motherfucker. Yo, this dude right here, when I was little, I heard nothing about bad, bad things about this dude when I was a young kid in, in New York. So come on now. Do your research on him. Go all the way back to what his father used to do. All the way back, because the apple don't fall far from the tree. But we got to tolerate it because this that's how it went down. And I understand how this country's ran. All right? Understand it. If you understand how this country's ran, you really don't... <laughs> you really don't have no say-so but to live it. You know? So don't complain about it. You know what I mean? Uh, you got to just go by the rules. And... Certain people, certain people got better in a better position than other people, you know. Skin color, everything plays a role in this shit, you know. So what the hell? What do you do? You roll with it. You figure out who you fuck with. They seem to be good people. You fuck with them. And that's it. Cats get an indication of how what person you mess with and they won't.